In August of 2012, Dr. Elsa Nunez started her seventh year as president of Eastern Connecticut State University. During her tenure, ESU has forged closer ties with the local community, led a campus-wide strategic planning process, shepherded the opening of expanded and remodeled facilities, including the Student Center, the Science Building, an Academic Services Center, and a new Center for Community Engagement. All very impressive. Under Dr. Nunez's leadership, Eastern Connecticut State University has received major national recognition, including from the US News and World Report and the Chronicle for Higher Education. Again, very impressive. But it is her capacity to achieve all this and excel at Latino college success that made her our choice as the keynote speaker for the Celebración de Excelencia. This capacity to lead her institution she brought us to her attention, being selected as a Semillas grant recipient in 2009, and ultimately to national recognition, including recently being cited by the Education Trust as ranked number one in, the na in a national study on the improvement of a six-year graduation rate of Hispanic college students at public universities. Accelerating Latino student success while expanding a public institution to thrive in the 21st century requires very hard work and visionary leadership. I present to you Dr. Elsa M. Nunez, President of Eastern Connecticut State University. Thank you. Thank you. That was a very, very lovely introduction. I dread introductions because there's a correlation between the length of the introduction and age. I'm in my 60s and I don't want people to figure that out too quickly. So thank you for being in the middle there, Sarita. It wasn't too long. I'm honored to be included this evening and to just reflect with you on the work that I've done with my colleagues at Eastern, but also to talk about the success that we can have as a community. And I use the word community expansively, not just the Hispanic community, but everybody who's in the room who cares about our Hispanic students. Let me begin by congratulating the awardees as well as the 16 finalists for their, the work they are doing to advance educational opportunity for Latino students in their communities. They do terrific work and congratulations. Excelencia's goal is to showcase best practices that work in our communities. Their motto, if you read the literature, is growing what works. And clearly, tonight's awardees are examples of that. It is a realistic goal, a goal that I can, can embrace very quickly, because there truly are no silver bullets in the work that we want to do to improve the quality of life for our community. I want to thank President Sarita Brown. Sarita has been terrific in providing leadership for Excelencia, and we're lucky to have her in this role. I love to talk to Deborah because Deborah Santiago has her heart in the community. She's a community organizer, and she's done a terrific job putting Excelencia in the place where it is today. Deborah, thank you. And Charlie Gonzalez, Congressman Gonzalez, who, he doesn't need any introduction. He's just terrific. He's always there when our community needs him. I want to acknowledge the Congressional Hispanic Caucus and the National Association of Elected and Appointed Officials for partnering with Excelencia on this important event. We know, we're not, we're not naive, we know as a community that it's all about coalition building. Politics is politics, it's local, but it's also national. And so this coalition that we've built from the ground up, where these women have built from the ground up with the support of the congressman, is a really important coalition that will help our agenda be accomplished. Perhaps you didn't know, but the academic achievement gap in, in grades 12, uh, K through 12, the difference in, in performance between low-income students, largely urban minority students, and their white affluent counterparts is largest in what state? Who wants to take a guess? The achievement gap is the largest between whites and minorities in what state? Mississippi? No. Alabama? No. Arkansas? No. Connecticut? Connecticut has the largest achievement gap in the country. Why? Because you've got wealthy, wealthy Western Connecticut, and you've got the poverty that starts from Hartford all the way to the east to Boston. 
It is an embarrassment, an embarrassment that such a wealthy state would have the largest achievement gap in the country. People are now on top of it in Connecticut. They're now, by us calling attention to it over and over again, we've gotten them to understand that is totally unaccepted, un unacceptable. When reading, writing, science, and math skills are tested at the fourth and ninth grade levels, low-income minority students are up to three grade levels behind in Connecticut. Three grade levels. The gap widens longer that Hispanics are in school and blacks are in school. Isn't that counterintuitive? That the gap actually gets wider the longer you're in school. It's, it, school is hurting our students. And so between fourth and ninth grade, the gap for Latino and African American students is about six points in reading, writing, science, and mathematics. It's an atrocity. The faculty and the staff of Eastern Connecticut State University and I have been determined to do something about these alarming statistics. But solutions are not easy to find, for if they were my friends, most of you would have found them already. The barriers that we seek to overcome together are significant. Latinos coming to this country from other lands have faced many hardships. There's the language divide, which I knew personally, social differences, class differences that are very deep-rooted, and the prejudice and the ignorance that occurs when cultures collide and people try to overcome the unfamiliar. Latino students in inner cities face an especially steep upward climb toward educational access and equity. In Connecticut, where I live and work, the increase in the level of children living in poverty, and the congressman knows this better than anybody, was the fifth largest increase in the nation last year. That means that there's a rapid downward trend that must be reversed. Children living in poverty in Connecticut are increasing, and in many states, it's increasing. There's a direct correlation between poverty and the attainment gap. And while about 30% of the nation's adult population has a college degree, only 13% of us, only 13% of Latinos have a degree, a college degree. Let me tell you what happened to me at Eastern. As I told you, I'm in my 60s. I have a very, very wonderful campus. It's the best job a woman could have. Or, uh, I've worked at, at uh, being a president a long time. I was a faculty member and got promoted through the ranks. And basically, what started to happen in my presidency was that I started to achieve things. And so um, Sarita was kind enough to mention some of those things, but U.S. News World Report takes the United States, cuts it into four quadrants. The north is the quadrant where I sit. My university is there. That quadrant goes all the way down to Maryland and all the way across to Pennsylvania. It's not the northeast. We rank in the top 100. We're in Princeton Review. I shop at Neiman Marcus. My children graduated college with no debt. I am very, very privileged. And so one day, as I was thinking in my office about my presidency and my legacy, I said, Elsa, what is your legacy going to be? That you made the top 100? That you're in the Princeton Review? That your children graduated with no debt? When my children put me in the ground, what do I want to be remembered for? And it wasn't any of those things. Within a week, within a week, I went to a local high school in Hartford. I didn't ask anybody to make the appointment. I was scared that if my secretary knew or anybody knew, they would all try to talk me out of what I thought. So I made the appointment myself. I didn't want to talk to a superintendent of schools, and I didn't want to talk to a principal because I know bureaucracy, and I didn't want to get caught up in bureaucracy. I went to these two high school guidance counselors, two men, a Hispanic man and a black man, and I said to them, I want to ask you a question. They were terrified. They didn't even know what the hell I was doing there. They said, I said to them, if you saw a student every day in this high school for four years who was given the worst deck of cards in life, whatever the stats were, whatever the information was about the students, you saw that they hung on to high school like this and they graduated because they had potential. I said to them, Harvard and Yale will take the A students. UConn and the land grants will take the B students. The community colleges will take the C students, but no one, no one will take the D students because they're lost. 
And I said, those are the ones that I want you to identify. Without them blinking, they said, President Nunez, we can identify those kids. And so thus started this program that Excelencia funded. It was all first an idea to identify potential. Because my friends, it is very hard in a paper review to identify potential. That's the problem. It's all about grades, achievements, and those things, even though my children had them, are almost impossible. Impossible. How could you get A's in high school if, you're, if you don't even have anything to eat at night? So with that, I felt that it was important, important to start some kind of a program that would identify them and bring them to Eastern. We are now in our fifth year, and we've enrolled many, many students in this program. The underlying premise has been to remove students from the negative influences of the urban environment. Street gangs, drugs, violence, negative role models, and immerse them in a positive environment on a beautiful college campus. So what if somebody told you every day at Eastern that you're smart? You might start believing it, right? So other key elements of the model include an educational partnership, a very strong partnership with our community college. My, those students are not admissible at Eastern. My faculty wouldn't allow them. They take their nine credits at the community college, but they live on my campus. They take a shower in the morning, nobody knows. They go to the community college, they, we, we supply the transportation, and they do very well there in those nine credits because the community colleges are experts in working with students who have deficiencies in mathematics, reading and writing. And our goal was to close the attainment gap. So they go to social events at Eastern, they get a job on campus, they do all the kinds of things that college students do. And they take one course with a professor who teaches very, very rigorous course in philosophy. That course they take as non-matriculated students. Second, there's a full range of academic and support services. There's tutoring, there's advising, there's um, supplemental instruction. But the most important element in the program is there's a mentor. But guess who the mentor is? Your boss. Because I don't believe in mentoring programs where you have to make an appointment and see somebody and try to fit them in your schedule. I believe that if you see your mentor every day, it will work. So they would go report to work and the mentor on campus would tell them how, or ask them, how's it going? How are your courses? What's going on in your life? What's going on with your family? And so this ability for them to explore the university with a support system was really critical. We also realized how important it is for minority students to see people of color. We are very, very proud at Eastern. We have the highest percentage of the minority faculty in any college or university, public or private, in the state of Connecticut. Since the students are, are non-matriculating at Eastern their first semester, we can't use financial aid at all. They come with no money, none. And so that was a problem that I had to solve, and that problem brought me to fundraise and to ask people, to beg people to invest an idea that had no legs, to invest an idea that nobody had tested, to invest in an idea that was very, 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 very marginal at that time. And so I took that work to, uh, to Excelencia. At that time, the Walmart Foundation gave us money, $50,000, and that award was instrumental in helping us pay for the room and board of many of the students. But it wasn't just that they gave me the money for the students. It was that Excelencia, by partnering with Walmart, invested in us, and our experiment became worthy. That's what happened with your money and with your investment. I wish some of those students could be with me on stage. They're actually more articulate than I am. Some of them have come from dysfunctional homes, families that are fragile. Others live in, uh, in neighborhoods where street gangs and violence were a day, day-to-day -day occurrence. There was drug trafficking in their apartments. Some of them were going to go on that path. I hear from them daily, and the first class we graduated this past spring, when I look at them, I am in disbelief that they're the same students. They now can look me in the eyes. They talk to me about Renaissance art and they talk to me about how wonderful it is to be a liberally educated person. 
While we like to think that each of those students is a symbol of success, we are also very moved to learn last week that Eastern has achieved the largest improvement in the sixth year graduation rate of Latino students. So if I got up here this morning, this evening rather, uh, and I had not read what I read a few mornings ago in my email, I probably would seem to you like I was just bragging because I do have evidence of success, but it's my evidence. So there's always a little bit of caution, and you know, you should be cautious when people brag too much about the work they do. So I'm very, very cautious about talking about this program publicly and the beginning years, and now I can talk about it publicly with great pride because this work wasn't done by me. This work was done by my faculty and my staff. And what happened, I got the email and I thought it was spam. And I had to ask my CIO to check its content and to check its source because it was from Ed, Ed Trust, one of the research arms of the country, which uh, asked almost 400 universities and colleges to participate in a study. We were one of them. And the email said, Elsa, you rank number one in the 400 universities in the country for achievement among Hispanics. And so the semillas means, thank you. And so semillas means in Spanish, seeds. And the grant you provided us three years ago has taken root. It has helped continue the program into our fifth year. It has helped convince others to give us money, the Department of Justice, the SBM Charitable Foundation, and it has given us support in many, many ways. It has helped us plant new seeds at a second feeder high school that we just started. It is my hope that other school districts and universities across the country will see that this model can work for them. While I recognize that hurdles facing Latinos and other minorities in getting into and succeeding in college are systemic and daunting, I believe that the coalition like this one can make a difference. I am proud to be part of Excelencia's awardees and extremely, extremely grateful for the people who believed in the idea that had not been tested but were willing to produce a new paradigm. Muchísimas gracias.